guys, welcome back to the channel, Dota of Increase. My name is Nazanese. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today's video, as the title says below, is going to be my January TBR. I'm hoping to have this video up during the first full week of January, which is like the week of the 6th. Hopefully, fingers crossed, but I'm going to run through with you guys exactly everything I'm going to be studying as well as everything I'm going to be reading. Now, if you haven't seen my TBR video for the Faith Reads Readathon, go check out that video by clicking the eye on the screen right here. Basically, that video is majority of my TBR, but I have other books that I also have to read outside of that TBR, so I'm going to run through all of the books I'm reading, but starting off with my studies and devotionals so for my devotional time i am deciding to do the um bible reading plan with misu andrews and another one of you ladies here on i think it's youtube or instagram i'm not sure where i found you or where you found me but i was asked to do a reading plan so i'm doing two sort of read through your bible reading plans one with misu andrews with hers um it is called let me just i'm waiting for it to pop up on my phone but um, it's the Bible Project um, reading plan in which you read the Bible in a year. And then I'm doing the Bible in a year plan from... What company is this? I don't even know. I didn't write any of this stuff down. So, yeah, and I'm sorry if you hear that banging. But, um, okay. So, I'm doing the Bible in a year with a bunch of you ladies. And this is um, you reading the entire Bible with two readings each day from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And that is from... Ligonor Ministries. I know who they are because I do get their little um, table talk magazines. I'll leave their name on the screen. You probably have seen them before, but I do get their magazines in the mail. So I'm doing that. And then, like I said, I'm also doing the Bible Project reading plan with Misu Andrews from the Bible Project. And um, with this one, if I'm not mistaken, you literally just read um, a couple of chapters from a book of day. So the way there is a setup is like you read Genesis 1 through four and then five through seven and then you know eight through eleven and things like that so that's how that's going so for that i have a specific bible and specific things i'm using and that is literally just reading the bible so what i do is i am using my devotional bible for women this is in the king james version this is from ellie claire she is the creator of the bible tabs that i use in my bibles i love those tabs so i'll leave a link where you can check out her tabs on amazon but um this bible is Inspired by Ellie Claire. I'm not sure who published this Bible, honestly. Not sure. I got this Bible back in 2018. April 2018. And, um... Yeah, it's just from Ellie Claire. So it's the King James Version. So I'm using this. And basically what it is, is literally just the scriptures itself. Two columns. Small font. Um, but she has little devotionals throughout. So... She has an index for all of the devotionals here, but in between the chapters, you will find devotionals. So I am using this to do like my devotional morning time routine in which I read whatever chapters I have to read for that day. And I'm just strictly highlighting and my highlighting is not extensive at all. Um, I'm writing in the margins with pencil because this is very, very thin Bible paper. But I am just simply highlighting, and the way that I highlight is I do yellow for anything that's important, anything that stands out to me. I do gray for anything that includes, like, a name of a person. Brown is for location, so I'm, like, underlining location names. So if they mention Babel or if they mention Canaan. Um, purple is anything to do with prayer, so any prayers that I want to incorporate for myself. Pink is anything personal or reflection related, so that's specifically for like the, devo the devos in here. And then green is for anything that I wanted to find. Now I may add another color or two for things that I may want to apply to myself, or for things that um, I have questions on, I may highlight in a different color. I'm not sure, but that's the Bible that I'm using. And with that, I'm using this notebook here. It's from Pen and Gear, and I'm literally just jotting notes of what I highlight. Nothing extensive, so you guys can see it's literally nothing <laughs> extensive at all i'm just literally writing my thoughts down um of what i highlighted whatever pops in my mind that's what i'm doing this is not a deep in-depth study and i find that it's um one it's it's a little bit easier for me to read through the old testament now i have studied genesis exodus and leviticus before couldn't stand it um i, I hated it so much but through me having 
become deeper in the word and having a closer relationship with God. As I'm reading through Genesis, I'm not finding that I'm getting confused as I was before, which is interesting. Um, I'm also using this baby here, which is a Rose Books, Rose Book of Bible Charts, Maps, and Timelines. I did do a review on this. You click the honest screen for this. This is, is huge. But I've been using this specifically for the, um, the family tree. For Jesus so that's strictly what I've been using this for obviously there are other things I'll use it for as I get along within the reading plan but um, this has been coming in so helpful so if you want to see that review just click the honest screen like I said I'll leave a link down below on Amazon but this is volume one there is th two other volumes volume two and volume three which I do own them on ebook version but I th I'm debating if I want to buy the physicals but um, this is really good really really good so that is my devotional sort of thing that I do when I wake up in the morning um, so that's that. Let's move this here. Then what I'm studying. We're going to say it together, y'all. Ready? The Gospel According to John. So I am using this notebook. Um, I'm not doing it in my journaling Bible um, because I want to switch up how I'm studying the Word of God this year. So what I'm doing is I'm spending a few days in a chapter um, and I'm writing my notes. So this is for John chapter 1. So like I go through verse by verse and write my notes of whatever pops out at me. Um, so like this is for verses 1 through 5 right here. This is John 1 verses 1 through 5. These are all of the notes that I have for that verse. And then we have verses 6 through 13. So I'm going by section titles and I'm writing down all my thoughts of what I'm getting. And then once I put them in here, I will then use this to help me when I do the Bible study with you guys, because I do have to switch up how I'm doing my Bible studies. I, um, it's, it's a lot of work, honestly, it's a lot of work. Number one, um, lots of editing to be done because I do them on Facebook first through Facebook live. And then I have to transfer it over into YouTube. And I know a lot of you, um, from YouTube, the ones that watch it on YouTube were complaining, not, not complaining, complaining, but like saying that the autofocus was a little messy and the problem with that is on Facebook live they don't have a specific like autofocus where you can set the focus automatically it literally is like autofocus so it goes in and out which I know can be a hassle and I know a lot of you guys don't like that so I am going to be trying something out different for February just to see if it works and if it doesn't I'll go back to like the old way of how I did it but um I find that this is helpful I'm enjoying it I have not gotten far you guys I'm still in John 2 John 2. John, John 2. So the goal this month is to get through 6 through 15. Fingers crossed. Um, and of course the Bible that I'm using is my new King James Spirit Filled Life Bible from Thomas Nelson. I mean, this is like my new baby. This this is my baby. Like, I still love, like I said, my other Bible, which is the Thompson Chain. And I also still love the women's... I'm looking at the Bibles, which is why I'm, you see me looking this way. But the Women's Study Bible from Thomas Nelson. But... This has, like, really changed my way of thinking and studying the word. So, we have those two. Alright, so, let me put this Bible back over here. That's it. So, devotional, I am doing the read through the Bible reading plans. I'm doing two of those. The Bible Project, as well as the one from Ligonier. Ligonier. Don't know how to pronounce that ministry, but yeah, it'll be linked down below. Um, as well as for where you can get to it on um, the Bible app as well. Um, but that's that. So let's get into my reading, okay? What I'm going to be reading. So pretty much mostly going to be fictional reading. I don't have many um, non-fictions. I think I have one, two, three, four non-fiction reads for this month that I'm going to be getting into. Um, which I guess I'll show you guys those first. I had this set up a certain way, but... Um, yeah, so I'm going to be reading Calling and Separation by Bobby and then I actually already finished this book. It was so good. Um, I gave it a... Okay, the thing with this is this book for me is a four. Um, but I feel like it would be a five for other people. But the reason why I'm giving it a four star rating is because a lot of the stuff I already kind of understood because of the ministries that I have gone to. My first church, which was called Prayer Temple Church in the Bronx, New York, um... I was raised in that ministry and they taught me a lot about um, spiritual warfare. Like, I've actually seen them deal with spiritual warfare. I mean, like, people slithering under, um, you know, pews, big people slithering under pews, people's head turning. Like, I've, I've witnessed this stuff before. So, um, at a young age. So, a lot of the stuff in here, as far as like calling and separation, wasn't 
confusing to me and then the ministry i'm at now which is fight to freedom worship center incorporated in the bronx new york as well um they're very adamant about you knowing your calling and understanding what it means to be separated for the call and things like that so this was really good um pastor bob yannon does have a youtube channel you can click the on the screen and go to his channel but i had the opportunity to hear him speak amazing guy amazing man he is the pastor of grace church in tulsa oklahoma so um i really enjoyed this book it was a short read about 79 pages i could have read this in a day but i ended up reading it in two days um but he does have a bunch of other like small books you can get on amazon paperbacks like this or kindle i do have one more other book from him that i'm going to be reading um but i think i'm gonna read some more of his work because this was actually really good i enjoyed it um quite a lot and i didn't annotate a lot but i did underline and highlight some things so this one focuses on elisha um as far as him being called and separated so uh this was really good i enjoyed it so it's already finished but that was one of the books um moving on the next book i have is 31 proverbs to light your past path by liz curtis higgs this is a 31 day devotional in which she goes through different proverbs from the book of proverbs and um so far i am on day four this was really good i am enjoying this so far i have found that i'm annotating a lot more than i do other devotionals which i think is really epic and what i mean by that is not only am i like underlining but i'm also writing in the margins um and I'm really relating to the things that she is saying. So the fact that I'm able to talk back to the text is amazing for me. So I'm just showing you guys, like, some of my things. You know, I didn't even underline that, so I need to go back and underline that one. But, um, yeah, and then with her prayers, I'm actually, like, I like the prayers, but there are certain portions of the prayers that really stick out to me. So I am enjoying that. Um, did I write anything for these? No. But yeah, so this is good. I'm using it as a also a devotional slash writing plan. So with this, I'm actually using my oops, faith planner from Recollections to do. Now, I slacked off with this back in October, like literally slacked off. I think the last time I wrote in this was October 17th. Um, I actually need to complete this because like I did it in my other journal, which where is that journal? This is the journal that I was using um, when I was doing my writing plans, but I think I finished it. I just never trans, yeah, I never put it into this planner. So um, we are starting now. As you can see, I can show you guys. I'm, I haven't written in it. I'm slacking on it, but um, you guys can see like I've started in it. So I need to just actually write my notes inside. But I did complete days one through four already but um i'm currently in this and i'm thoroughly enjoying this this might be a five star for me hopefully this will be a five star the next book i'm currently reading is one that i'm definitely going to be finishing today i was supposed to finish this yesterday but i'm finishing it today because it's so good um and it's on wings of devotion by rosanna and white this is the second book in the crow breakers i don't know if it's going to be a trilogy or a series the first book is called the number of love which i do do own haven't read it it's historical fiction and this i am finding as comical as i did with the spice king it is set in the 1900s this one is taking place in london england um but it follows a young nurse named arabelle or is it arabella arabelle yes arabelle dindler and a um is he a captain no he's a major see i don't forgot what he is major philip camden and they have such an interesting relationship um because arabelle is not the prettiest person um she says it hurts she, she calls basically calls herself ugly all the time and then when philip finally meets her for the first time he definitely call, he calls her ugly without saying the word ugly which it irritates me because i don't think anybody should call themselves ugly but it's also relatable because i'm pretty sure we all call ourselves ugly one one time or the other and then it's comical because it's just like it's it's normal for them to say this like she, her, she finds out her fiance cheated on her because philip camden's sister um cassandra ends up pregnant by her fiance so philip devises his plan along with her father to kidnap her arabelle to take her to his house to get her fiance to break off the betrothal so that his fiance could marry cassandra because her fiance fell in love with cassandra but the thing is arabelle is not looking for love she does not believe she can be loved because she feels like she's unattractive um most men are after her because she is an heiress is that the right word heiress she's basically really wealthy her aunt um passed away and gave her half of her inheritance and then the other half went to her father and she lives with her father and just seeing the way arabelle and philip just communicate and their banter is like so funny like there's one part now i've been annotating in here i just haven't um 
I haven't put in my tabs. But there's this one scene I have to talk about because it, it cracked me up because he did it again in like further chapters. But it's on page 109. Don't know what chapter this is, but um, he basically decides on his part that you know he likes her not likes her as like a romantic thing but likes her as a friend she's very nice she's very sweet um she's very faithful which this woman is oh i got a review coming on it but i gotta read this part so he's like um he's made up his mind so he'll be her escort so she's saying i don't need a guard dog he <laughs> he then does the dumbest thing that i think most guys in this point would do and he barks like a dog literally says woof she says, go home, Camden. No, I don't want your company. Too bad. I'll have my father. Then he says, I have already spoken to your father, and he thinks it capital of me to want to champion you. And then further back, um, no, further on in the chapter, um, in chapter 11, she says, I have to fight them off. You are under no obligation as we've discussed this before. Meaning, he's not obligated to protect her from these men who are basically after her, her money. And he said, it says, he's folded his arms tight, creases of defiance, woof. So then he barks again, which goes back to what happened on page 109 when she's like, I don't need a guard dog. So I think it's funny. Their banter together is like really cute. Um, I am on page 137. Um, so I have, uh, let me see how many pages I have left. That's 381. So I have about like 200 plus pages left, just about two something. Um, I'm, I'm gonna finish this today because this is comical. I'm loving it. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, it might be a four star, like, very funny. So depending on how this ends, it might be a five star. I'm rambling, but it's really good. Really, really good. Okay. Moving on. So then on to the next book. Okay. So the next three books are gonna be the next three books that I read for next week. So the first one is gonna be Nine Fruits of the Spirits. Um, this one is On Love by Robert Strand. This is just a devotional book. Um, this is, of course, for the Faith Reads Readathon, but this is a book I picked up from Dollar Tree a while ago. Picked it up like twice. And this is one that I'm excited to get into. If you guys don't know my word, well, you probably don't know because I haven't made that video yet. But my word of the year is love. And there's a reason why I picked that word because it really encompasses all that I want to do. I want to be able to serve God, but I want to do it because I love God. I want to be kinder to people because I want to um, love and respect God. There's like a whole thing of why I picked love for my word of the year. We'll talk about that. But we, we're doing this and I'm probably going to do this in like a day or two. We'll see. Um, but what I like is that it has like little questions on the inside. So I'm going to spend like a, probably a, like a Saturday or Friday evening filling this out and doing it and really focusing on the word um, and making that sort of my day of just spending it with God. No um, YouTube videos. Well, if I watch YouTube videos, they'll be like faith related. No Netflix, no animes, no nothing. It'll be a day strictly um dedicated to the lord and me filling this out so we have this book here following that um me and my sis my sis steph over at quotes and beauty and books we are starting another buddy read we have buddy reads i think all the way up until march <laughs> we love reading um but we're gonna be diving into mind games by nancy mahel i'm probably saying her name wrong I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to learn to pronounce it correct. But this is the first book in the Kaylee Quinn Profiler series. Trilogy. Trilogy. Yes. Um, I do own the first two books. The third book will be released this year, which I cannot wait because that cover is so nice. But, um, so nice. Excuse me. But this one is a romantic suspense and it deals with the BAU from the FBI and I'm here for it. I love Criminal Minds. Criminal Minds is like one of my shows. So, of course, we had to read this, okay? Of course. So, I'm going to read the back. Um, it says, the FBI behavioral analysis Kaylee Quinn's methods may be highly unorthodox, but her talent is undeniable. She's done her best to establish a new life for herself after being demoted and transferred to St. Louis when a reporter revealed she's the daughter of an infamous serial killer. But when that same reporter claims to have received an anonymous poem predicting a string of murders ending with Kaylee's, it seems her old life has followed her. When a body is found that fits the poem's morbid predictions, Kaylee and her new partner, Special Agent Noah Hunter, are forced to move past his skepticism of her approach and work together to unravel the deadly riddle. With a brazen serial killer who breaks all the normal patterns on the loose, Noah and Kaylee must race to catch the murderer before anyone else, including Kaylee, is killed. So, I'm here for it. The daughter of a murderer, um, I'm sorry, the daughter of a serial killer, then you have another serial killer who's writing poems about murdering people, a little romance, the BAU, Noah Hunter. It just, it gives me criminal mind vibes, okay? So, I, I have high hopes. I am hoping. This is a five star read. If not, I'll take a four, four point five, okay? But if this is a three star, I'ma cry. 
I'm gonna cry because I, I plan to have the whole trilogy and I hope it's good, okay? So we're gonna dive into this on Monday. Well, we technically are starting on Sunday, but I might not be able to read Sunday because Sunday is church day and I go to two services on Sundays and I'm active and I'm busy. So I'm gonna start on Sunday. I mean, I'm gonna start on Monday, but I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm here for this. Here for this. So, uh, yes, I'm excited. As you can see, my a lot of these books are already, like, <laughs> separated with little page tabs. Not page tab, like, little papers, because that's how I break up my reading between three to four days. So, this one is broken up already, and I can't wait to get into this. Following that, I have another review book. This is going to be Christian Fantasy, and this was actually sent to me from the author for review, and I told her I would definitely review it for her the first week of um january so that is obviously next week um the week that you're watching this is the first week so hopefully i'm already far into this book by the time you're seeing this but it is ascended by kimberly gray the lines of battle are drawn in black and white this is christian fantasy all about angels good and evil and i think if i'm not mistaken from what i remember on her website black is good and white is bad so it's one of those books that kind of reverses the colors because normally black is bad white is good this one i believe reverses the colors okay um so i'm gonna read the back of it it says for hundreds of years war has raged across the realm of guardian angels white wing against black wing grace is the saboteur daughter of the white wing spy master destined to end the war once and for all but all of that is snatched away when she is captured by the black wings trapped in their secret city grace finds herself questioning everything she's ever been told about her enemies and about herself so i'm excited to dive into this it looks like it's gonna be epic i'm hoping it's at least a four star read um i'm looking for a lot more christian fantasies i'm a fantasy lover we know this i love fantasy all day every day fantasy is like it gets me going and i'm finding that christian fantasy that really weaves scripture and faith into it is like epic for me epic i mean top dog so i have high hopes for this um i can't wait to dive into this and see what i think okay so the next four are review books um they are not on my tbr for the readathon but they're review books like i said and they need to be read so um the first one technically i already read but i'm going to reread the physical arc of and that's going to be isaiah's legacy by misu andrews i can include this into the readathon tbr because isaiah obviously the book of isaiah definitely would work but um this is going to be a reread for me i did read the e arc i have a physical copy now we just need to read this this is historical biblical historical biblical fiction what <laughs> this is biblical fiction based on king manasseh which is king hezekiah's son and if you have not read isaiah's daughter i would highly suggest you do because it is the sequel to isaiah's daughter um it's the third book in her prophets and kings but it's the sequel to isaiah's daughter and it picks up literally right after the event of um isaiah's daughter so you have the prophet isaiah you have king hezekiah and he dies and oh my god his death no words i need to read the i need to read the scriptures and see if that's really how he died because i i was confused i was lost i have a reading blog it's coming february 18th which is the release date of this book so expect that but no words um did i love this book yes it got a five star so i'm hoping to reread it the physical copy so that i can have all of like my annotations in physical form um but we have that this 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 was epic just i'm, I'm gonna leave it at that we're not gonna talk about this till february okay right, moving on next book is going to be the first book in a new series by lynette eason this is danger never sleeps collateral damage and this is romantic suspense um it sounded good so i went with the request for it when they sent the email and yeah, it. I'm going to read the back of it, okay? They thought they left the fight behind on the battlefield, but their greatest struggles are just beginning. Honorably discharged from the army after an explosion nearly killed her, former military psychiatrist Brooke Adams has set up shop to help others, but her days of helping military personnel are over. She's got her own battles to fight from her time overseas, and she's not equipped to take on more. Former Army Special Ops Sergeant First Class Asher James I'm sorry, but why he need all them titles? Like, I never understood people in the army and stuff. Like, I, I, I support everyone who's in the army, the navy, the military, whatever. But, like, that's a lot, okay? Just personally, that's a lot to say. But, um, yeah, Asher James <laughs> could handle anything that war sent his way. The only thing that scares him now is sleep, as the shadows close in and the nightmares begin. Finally convinced that he needs help, Asher makes an appointment with a counselor. When he arrives at her office, she isn't there, but a dead body is. When it becomes clear that Brooke was a real target of the attack and that her secrets go even deeper than his own, Asher vows to protect her no matter what. So it sounds like it's going to be action-packed. 
I'm here for it. That's that's all that matters. So, yeah, we're going to read this too. Next is going to be Christian Contemporary Romance, and this is the first book in the Global Search and Rescue. It's The Way of Bray by Susan May Warren. I do own her other book, Knox, in that whole kind of series. Haven't read it yet, though. So, I might, well, I have to read this now, so I'm going to read this, see if I like it. But, um, this is Contemporary, and on the back it says, Haunted by the memory of a rescue gone wrong, former para-rescue jumper Orion Starr has no desire to join Hamilton Jones's elite rescue team. But he also can't shirk his duty when the call comes in to rescue three lost climbers on Denali in Alaska. Jenny Calhoun's yearly extreme challenge with her best friends is her only escape from her guilt. The former CIA profiler and psychiatrist greenlighted an operation against the Taliban that ended in ambush and lives lost. When her cathartic climb on Denali turns deadly, she'll be forced to trust her life to the most dangerous of heroes, the man she nearly killed. Orion and Jenny will have to put their wounds behind them to save their friends and their hearts. So, honestly, I'm not going to lie, I don't really have 100% high hopes for this. I'm hoping it's at least a 3 star, 3.5, but, um, you know, I don't really have high hopes. So, hopefully, because I don't have high hopes, it'll at least be a 4 star rating, but we have this book. Last review book that I have is going to be Endgame by Rachel Dillon, and this is the first book in her Capital Intrigue trilogy. I'm going to assume it's going to be a trilogy, and this is Romantic Suspense. Again, another book that I requested for a review. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do better. But, um, it says each new clue, every crime scene brings them closer to discovering the end game. When elite members of the military are murdered on the streets of Washington, D.C., FBI Special Agent Bailey Ryan and NCIS's Special Agent Marco Augustini must work together to bring the perpetrator to justice. Unfortunately, all evidence points to a Navy SEAL sniper who Bailey refuses to believe is guilty. When Bailey and Marco start to connect the dots between the victims, they wonder if there's a deeper cover-up at play. After Bailey is targeted, it becomes clear that someone is willing to kill to keep their dark secrets. With stakes getting higher by the moment, Bailey and Marco rush against the clock to determine whom they can really trust in this twisted conspiracy. As allies turn to enemies, the biggest secret yet to be uncovered could be the end of them all. So, again, NCIS, I'm here for it. FBI, I'm here for it. I love NCIS, the show, so, yeah. We got that. Okay, so the last nonfiction that I'm going to be reading is from C.S. Lewis. I have the classic sing signature classics bind up, so we have that. But I'll put the cover here. I'm going to be reading Mere Christianity. This book has been recommended. It has hi been highly acclaimed. So I want to dive into that. I don't honestly know much about it. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I don't. But I have high hopes, at least a four-star rating. I did love the screw tape letters, which was phenomenal. Um, so I'm going to be reading that book. And I, like I said, I don't know much about it, so I'm clueless. Hopefully it's good. <laughs> okay, so the next four books are going to be definite reads, and the fifth book might possibly be possibly be a read, but they are going to be the books that I had on my TBR for the uh, Faith Reads Readathon. Okay, so the first book off of that pile is going to be Support of the Wife of Moses by Merrick Halter. This is the second book in the Canaan trilogy, and this one follows the wife of Moses, Zipporah, who is also the daughter of Jethro, who is a high priest, I believe, for the Midianites. And, um, yeah, basically just tells her story and, I guess, how she views Moses. I'm not 100% sure about exactly what it is, but I'm going to read the back for you guys. So it says, Although she is a Kushite by birth, one of the people of the lands to the south, Zipporah grew up as the beloved daughter of Jethro, high priest and sage of the Midianites. But the color of Zipporah's skin sets her apart, making her an outsider to the men of her adopted tribe who do not want her as a wife. Then one day, while drawing water from a well, she meets a handsome young stranger. Like her, he is an outsider. A Hebrew raised in the house of the Egyptian pharaoh, Moses is a fugitive forced to flee his homeland. Zipporah realizes that this man will be the husband and partner she never thought she could have. Moses wants nothing more than a peaceful life with the Midianites, but Zipporah won't let Moses forget his past or turn away from his true identity. She refuses to marry him until he returns to Egypt to free his people. When God reveals himself to Moses in a burning bush, his words echo Zipporah's, and Moses returns to Egypt with his passionate and generous wife by his side. A woman ahead of her time, Zipporah leaps from the pages of this remarkable novel, bold, independent, and a true survivor. She is a captivating heroine, and her world of deserts, temples, and ancient wonders is a fitting backdrop to an epic tale. So we have this. I'm interested to really dive into this, and I can't wait. The next is going to be sort of a super natural, futuristic kind of sci-fi read, um, and it's by Travis, Th Travis Thrasher. It's American Omens, um, and here is the book. And I'm going to read the back of this because it kind of confused me 
a little bit. I'm reading a synopsis. So on the back, it says, In this top thriller that depicts a future where belief is dangerous, faith is deemed hatred, and a group of powerful elites keep watch, the Reckoner has come to wake up America. This is your wake-up call, Cheyenne. You've been sleeping your whole life, dreaming those dreams. The alarm clock is about to go off, and there won't be any way to press the snooze button. So just keep walking, keep breathing, and maybe start believing. The year is 2038, and Cheyenne Byrne is a brilliant young programmer working for Akator, the world's top technology firm. Her father converts to Christianity, and he suddenly di disappears without a trace. When a stranger hands Cheyenne a coded message that sends her on a collision course with the clandestine group of believers, she must put her life in the hands of those following a man known only as the Reckoner. He claims he wants to bring back true faith in Christ to America and also reveal the forces behind the disappearances of many of the renowned people who publicly declared their Christian faith. Operating in the shadows and living off the grid, this mysterious prophet assembles a ragtag team, including a former bookseller whose stores were shut down for selling prohibited books to help him take the battle for transparency to the top. With a ruthless FBI agent closing in, can Cheyenne and the others expose the truth and lead a return to God in America before it's too late? It sounds epic. I did get a chance to read the first two chapters as I got a sampler, and it was really interesting to me and really good. I tried to read this before, but I don't know, it just kept getting away from me. So I'm hoping this is at least a 4.5, four-star rating. If it's a five-star, that'd be awesome, but I do have high hopes for this book. The next book is going to be one that has been rec recommended to me like thousands of times, and that's going to be Left Behind um, by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. This is the first book in the Left Behind series. There are 13 books total. This one says, A Novel of Earth's Last Days. So, reading the inside flap, it says, Vehicles suddenly unmanned, careen out of control. People are terror-stricken as loved ones vanish before their eyes. Some blame space aliens, others claim a freak of nature. Still others say it was a high-tech military attack by a world conqueror. But airline captain Rayford Steele's wife had warned him of this very event. If Irene Steele was right, both she and their young son have disappeared. But what about their older daughter? Like Rayford, Chloe has been skeptical. In the midst of global chaos, Rayford must search for his family for answers for truth. As devastating as the disappearances have been, the darkest days may lie ahead. And this is basically all about the end times, the rapture, and all that. So it starts with the rapture, with people being obviously taken up, and then those who are left behind dealing with the aftermath and preparing for the end times. So it sounds like it's going to be good. I believe there is a movie to this, but I'm hoping that this is at least a four-star rating because this has been highly recommended to me thousands of times. So we have this. Next book I have is from Tosca Lee, and it's Iscariot, a novel of Judas, and this is basically going to be focusing on Judas, who we all know as a betrayer of Jesus. Um, so on the back, it says, the story you thought you knew. They say that I betrayed him, that I reduced his price to 30 silver shekels, that I turned against my master. They do not know me. Judas Iscariot. History has called him many things. Thief, liar, traitor, reviled throughout history and infamous for his suicide. He is a man whose very name is synonymous with betrayal. And the only disciple that Jesus called friend, which is so true. Um, from the acclaimed best-selling author of Hava, The Story of Eve, Iscari is a compelling portrait of biblical history's most maligned character, from his tumultuous childhood to his emergence as the man known to the world as the betrayer of Jesus. But even more, it is an extraordinary view into the life of Jesus that forces us to re-examine everything we thought we knew about the most famous and infamous religious icons in history so i have high hopes for this okay high hopes i'm hoping it's a five star but i'll settle for a full 4.5 i i can't wait to dive into this like oh there's even more information so i'm going to read the inside flap okay so on the inside flap it says the most reviled man in biblical history comes to life in jesus judas believes he has found the one the promised messiah and the future king destined to overthrow roman rule Galvanized, Judas joins the disciples, ready to enact the change he has waited for all his life. But Judas's vision of a nation free from Roman rule is crushed by the inexplicable actions of the Nazarene himself, who will not bow to social or religious conventions, who seems, in the end, to turn against his own people. At last, Judas must confront the fact that the master he loves is not the liberator he hoped for, but a man bent on a drastically different agenda. Iscariot is the story of Judas from his tumultuous childhood and tenuous family life as a devout Jew to a man known to the world as a betrayer of Jesus Christ. But even more, it is a singular and surprising view into the life of Jesus himself, an intricate account that will cause you to ask, would I have done the same thing as Judas? So that is interesting. Judas thought that Jesus was going to be 
um, a certain type of leader and he was pretty much a different type of leader so now that actually puts things into a different perspective to for me concerning him because I know there are times when um, we have like bosses and co-workers and friends and teachers who we think should be one way and when they're not that way that we have in our mind we tend to get upset so that's interesting I'm really interested and have high hopes for this book so yeah we have Iscariot by Tosca Lee the final book that will be a maybe is going to be Thief of Corinth by Tessa Afshar. Yes, I know. I know. I don't read this book like three times. Tabs. Um, gave this book four stars, but I want to try and read it again. Um, we'll see. I didn't care for Paul too much in this, but I liked the things that he said. I don't know. I just want to try to reread it and see if I can at least give it a 4.5 star rating because this is the only book that I've given her. Um, a four star for and this is the seventh book that she released the eighth book is obviously daughter of rome but um yeah we have this this is gonna be a maybe if i can get through all the other books on my list because i have a total of let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fourteen books i completed one i'm in the middle of one and i'm almost done with another so i'm gonna say i completed two books and i'm in one so you know we're gonna be hopeful fingers crossed this goes well but I think that's it for this video. So, thank you guys for liking, subscribing, and all that great stuff. I am almost at 3,000 subscribers. I cannot believe it. I am mind-blown, you guys. Like, what? It is insane. Um, but if you are not subscribed, subscribe to the family. Join the sisterhood. I don't care if you're a guy. Join the sisterhood as well. We welcome you into the, the family, if you're a man. Um, and speaking of, I will be creating shirts for men because a lot of the men in my church have been wanting the shirts so i am going to be creating a line called son of increase which is specifically for men um so yeah it will coincide with daughter of increase i've it's been on my heart to do that honestly for about a year now um but i've been going back and forth between son and men of increase but i'm gonna go with son of increase um and it was actually recommended to me again this past uh new year's eve when um my youth pastor from my church was like we'll make it son of increase so the fact that him and his wife said it and it's been on my heart to actually do that for a long time i'm just gonna go with it so that's that so if you want to join the daughter of increase family just know you will be a son of increase okay all right and if you are subscribed to the channel click the, the bell excuse me to stay notified and i will see you guys in the next video bye